could join us this morning. After a couple of soggy days last week, it's great to be with this warmth and the sunshine again, and I'm trying to soak up the last bits of nice weather before fall truly kicks in. So as we begin a new programmatic year, we are shifting our focus or the format of our Facebook Live meditations. On Wednesday mornings, Pastor Tim and I will record a devotion exploring the gospel reading assigned for the upcoming Sunday. Speaking only for myself, sometimes this will be bullet points of interesting notes from scholars. Sometimes it'll be a more cohesive narrative, sometimes a mix of the two. It's just something for you to chew on for the, um, as you explore the text for the upcoming Sunday. And then, so that will be our Facebook Live Wednesday morning devotion. And then on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m., Hulda Ellisted, McFarland Lutheran's coordinator of lay ministry and adult education extraordinaire, she will be leading a discussion on Zoom based on the text and on this recorded video. If you'd like to join Halda and other adults in that conversation and Bible study, feel free to email her and she will get you the Zoom link for the pre-Sabbath word devotion and discussion. So let's dig in. The assigned reading for this Sunday is Matthew 20, verses 1 through 16. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give, I choose to, give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious? because I am generous. So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The word of the Lord. Today, Jesus tells us a story describing the kingdom of heaven. It's about a landowner and the five groups of people he hires to work in his vineyard. People are hired at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., noon, 3 p.m., and 5 p.m. These people weren't hired as permanent employees. This was not an interview, check the references, hope for a full-time gig sort of situation. These were day laborers. They stood at a strategic location in the village, hoping to be chosen to work for the day. If you looked or appeared strong or healthy and competent, you were chosen. If you didn't look that way, you were left standing there. Keep in mind, if you were picked, you were paid the usual daily wage. Scholar David Lowes wrote about how this was not a reliable salary, but was estimated to be what one needed to feed their family for the day, i.e. a daily wage. To be chosen meant that you went home that night with enough money to feed your family the next day. To be picked over meant another night of empty stomachs. Then you started this process all over again the next morning. And about a daily wage, David Lowe's also wrote that this shed some insight into the practical earnestness of Jesus's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. When the 6 a.m. folk saw the 5 p.m. folk, who only worked one hour, get paid a full day's wage, they expected to receive more. 
but they also received the usual daily wage, which was the agreement. Did you notice the complaint isn't that they did not get paid more, but the landowner made the least to be hi- the last to be hired equal to us who have been bo- who have borne the burden of the day. The discomfort is not the pay, but rather being made equal to someone who they deemed undeserving. We in turn are made uncomfortable by the truth disclosed in this admission. Dr. Lowe's also points out the connection between this story and that of Genesis 3, when the first two created beings eat fruit from the tree in the middle of the Garden of Eden. For him, this story is, and I quote, primarily a story about how through our own insecurity and lack of trust, we come to understand and assess our lives, not through the abundance we have been given by God, but instead by what we feel we still lack. Because of this gnawing sense of lack, we define ourselves over and against others, comparing and begrudging their good fortune because it wasn't our good fortune. End quote. Humanity in the garden has plenty to eat. We are surrounded by food and possibilities, but we are instructed to leave just one tree alone. And it's that one tree that sticks in our craw. It's the one tree we lack. And the story closes with the landowner asking, are you envious because I am generous? A question I believe we are meant to ask ourselves. So some discussion or reflection questions for you. The first, after the initial reading, did you identify more strongly with the 6 a.m. hire or the 5 p.m. hire? What is your emotional response to everyone being paid the same wage? Second question, the 6 a.m. worker reveals he is unhappy being made equal to the 5 p.m. worker. How do you feel about the confession? Third, remember that this is a description of the kingdom of heaven. What do you think about Jesus using this particular story to describe God's kingdom? And last, How might God be calling you to respond to this passage? So just a few things for you to think about or talk about to chew on as you explore this text for this coming Sunday. And let us close in prayer. And I've chosen the prayer of the day that is also assigned for this Sunday. So let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Thanks for joining me today, church, and I hope you enjoyed this preview to this Sunday's text and that you enjoy your conversation tomorrow evening with Hilda. Have a great day.